Got something to say? Second Kings. Second Kings. Sixth chapter. Amen. 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 And uh, I told y'all last week about when Greg, when I called him and he first was telling me he got saved. He was telling me about Christ. And at the end of the concert, at the end of the phone call, I just wanted to know, Greg, what time you're coming. I said, man, you ain't hearing nothing I say. I had my clientele, they, was, they still wanted their packages. <laughs> and at the end of the day, I still had to deliver. But anyway, years, a couple of years later, we hadn't seen Greg and Mason Obama. I gave Paul, Paul a thought. I probably told y'all the story before. But, but for the rest of y'all, I'm going to say it. I'm going to tell y'all what happened. I gave her, I think at the time she was my she we wasn't married, and I gave her this party. And this party was, was a, it was a rocking party, things were going on, a lot of things was happening. And then when I looked up, I saw Greg and Mr. come through the door. And I was so happy to see him, because I hadn't seen him. I know I know about a year, maybe it could have been a couple of years, but he come through the door, and uh, things were going on. And uh, next thing I know, only them two can find Bibles in the place and they were praying for people in the party. <laughs> this party had everything. And they were praying and laying hands on people back then. And it just, it really warmed my heart because all kinds of things were happening there. Yes, it was. You see, when you're out there, it's stressful. And everybody don't make it. But I don't know when they left, but when they left, the next thing I seen was the police coming through the door. They said the party ain't rocking until the police come or not. <laughs> and I had a DJ, he was a character, and uh, after they talked to me and they turned around and leave, he said, what they want? And I said, well, they want to know what time we're going to shut down and this and that. He said, man, forget them. But he didn't use that word. He said, we got a right to be here. You know, and all that. No, well, when they came back, man, they came back with a whole bunch of more police. <laughs> well, I have to say this. I'm so glad that they came and that they continued to pray for me and Paul. Because a couple of years after that, I got saved. And I got a lot of issues, but man, I ain't what I used to be. Amen. Everybody know my wife and I, we in a storm right now. We in a storm. And my kids, they always call me and everything. I say, no, I got him. I'll call you if I need you. And thank God my baby, that's my, if y'all, that's my wife and that's my kids right there. And my daughter, and my two sons, and your children. His girlfriend. But uh, I'll tell you, my guy, if I need you, I'll call him out. But Corey, he come back from Minnesota safe and sound. Amen. I don't take that for granted. I didn't want him to go. Jerry said, he didn't want none of us to go. I said, no, I did. <laughs> <laughs> let me get to the word. Let me get to the word. Amen. Amen. Everybody there? Okay, 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. Uh, we'll start at the 8th verse. It says, Now the king of Syria was making war against Israel. And he counseled his servants, saying, My camp will be in such and such a place. And the man of God sent to the king, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place, for the Syrians will come down there. And the king of Israel sent someone to that place. I wish the man of God had told him. Does he warn him? And he was watching there, not just once, and not just twice. This happened over and over again. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was greatly troubled, and he wanted to know, who is the mole? Who is saying, well, we're going to be here and there? So he called his servants and said to them, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? 
And when the servant said, none of us, my Lord, but is Elisha, the prophet, who is in Israel, tell the, he's telling the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedroom. So he said, go see where he is, and let me send and get him. And he was told, surely he is in uh, Dothan. Therefore he sent horses and chariots, a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. And when the servant of the man of God arose early and went out, there was many, there was an army surrounded the city with horses and chariots. And the servant said, well, that's my Lord, what are we going to do? We are surrounded. And he answered, do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened his eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountains were full with horses and chariots of fire around Elisha. The man of God said, open his eyes that he may see. You know, the message about here, the, the message of what I want to say today is that our eyes need to be open to the angels that we are having yes, yes. waiting to minister or waiting for a lawful command from one of us, from us to, to, to sing them out to do whatever it is that you're having a battle with. We can't see him. But the man of God asked him to open up his eyes. It's my prayer. My wife's prayer. We pray all the time. We give the angels camp. Uh, we, we give the angels charge over our children to be in camp all around about them. Because the time has come a long time ago where you can't hold your hand and you can't be there. To protect them. But the angels are right there waiting for a lawful command. But you can't see them. Do you believe in divine protection? Hmm? Divine protection is more than with that nine millimeter. Okay. <laughs> I'm just telling you the truth. Yeah. Now, you know, y'all want to go and get your guns if you want, that, and, and that's fine, that that's what you, that makes you feel comfortable. Huh. But I'm telling you, there's nothing like divine protection. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. It's coming from a guy that carried guns, that used guns in the past. It's stressful. And you can't always have it with you. Some days you just ain't gonna have it. But you can always have divine protection. So the man of God asked him, he said, just open up his eyes. He said, listen, don't worry about what you see. Open up his eyes to what you can't see. That's right. Thank you. Open our eyes. Girls don't have anything to do with car accidents. But we've been delivered so many times yes. from all kinds of danger. That's right. Just because you left your house a little five minutes later, you missed something. Yes. Or uh, five minutes early, I missed something. Yes. Just because you went that way and not that way, you missed something. I believe it. This is what I believe, so so be it according to your faith. Some people faith is in the gods. And I understand that. I understand that. My faith was in it too. But I just want to talk to you about 
what you can't see is real than what you can. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. You know, we pray, and sometimes, and Greg called just about every day checking on us. Yeah. And yes, my wife and I, we still get on each other's nerves. We still get, she's in, uh, uh, putting a boot on, I said you're putting it on the wrong foot. No, it's on the right foot. It's on the right foot. We still get on each other's nerves. <laughs> but we are praying and we are calling those things that be not as though they were. So that we can make it out of this storm. Because we're going to be better than what we were when we went in. That's right. Glory, glory. Absolutely. Greg said, look, man, we want to fast. This week, pick a day out to fast. Tell your wife, she, we fasted for her. She don't have to fast. Not with her. Not with her. So you're not on a fast for her. But we're going to pick a day if y'all can fast maybe three hours with her. Just a bad hug note. Right, so she need to eat. Yeah. Right, she needs to eat. Fast. We are fast. <laughs> you eat. <laughs> Don't be disobedient. Don't be disobedient. Eat. You eat. Fast. Amen. 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 Oh, Greg told me, he said, tell him, Don't be rebellious. I said, I can't believe I'm going to tell him. Don't be rebellious. Just come and tell him. Flow. Flow. You try to control me. I said, No, B, I'm going to tell him. I'm just simply trying to protect you. Yes, that's right, brother. Amen. It was a whole thing when the doctor told her your husband need to take control of the finances. She had a problem with that. I said, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Take control of the little monies. But, you know, I'm just saying this. As you read that story, there's another story uh, where the man of God's eyes had to be open. I'm going to read it right fast in Numbers 22. God had told his prophet not to go. Numbers 22, 31, I'm going to read it right fast. But he had told the prophet not to go because the people wanted this prophet to curse the folk that God had blessed. Uh -huh. yeah. And he said no. That's right. God said, no, you can't curse without bless. That's right, come on. Can't curse. At the end of the day, he went anyway. And uh, this prophet had a, he had a, he had a donkey that saw the angel and wouldn't go. He just would not go that way. And this man beat the donkey until the Lord opened up the mouth of the donkey and said, man, why are you beating me? Oh. <laughs> the donkey? Yeah, the donkey? Yeah, you ain't that. It's found in Numbers 22. You can read that chapter. It's very interesting. It is. But finally, God opened up the eyes of the man of God and he saw the angel there. Then the Lord opened up Billy's eyes and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey in the streets town? Behold, I have come out to stand against you because your way is perverse before me. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to you about what you can't see. Yes, yes. God's speaking to you all, all the time. You got to obey what God is speaking to you, to your heart. Yeah. And the way to know that is God speaking and not just some other spirit is going to line up with the word of God. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. God will never tell you to do something that's contrary to his word. That ever, but we're being standing in the model two or three witnesses. Yeah. Amen. So 
so if God's speaking to you, you don't know whether it's God or what it is, then go to the Word and God will show you yeah. that it is Him speaking to you, that it's Him trying to direct you, it's Him trying to guide you into green pastures, into the living water, into life and not death, because we live by the decisions that we make. We are here today. I'm here right now, standing here today, because of decisions I made yesterday. That's right. Now I told Greg after I got saved, I said, Greg, I can't live this life. Amen. I gotta go back to what I know. He said, Man, you can do it. <laughs> yes, so true. He said, Man, you can do it. I said, Greg, this, 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 I got married, I got a baby, I got, everything is happening all at one time. It's rough. And then I ain't out there making the money I used to make. Now I'm on a regular Joe job. Yeah. Hmm. But they continue to pray and labor. Yes, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. One day I ministered. A little while back, I was somewhere ministering, and I shared that the same guy that I used to run the street with and do a lot of things with, he and I baptized. I think we baptized, what, 13 people that day? We're not trying to kill them no more. We, we're trying to get them saved. <laughs> no, people are trying to kill you. But I'm just saying, you know, that's God. Forces are at work that you can't see, but they're working out for your good. You got to realize and recognize that God is for us. Those angels are waiting on, on command. And, and let me say this, just like the angels are there, you got demons are there too. That right. bring stuff to pass. That's, right. yeah. That's contrary. That you will speak out of your mouth, That's that right. you will have. Y'all know it's all about what you say. Yeah. Watch your mouth. Watch what you're saying. Watch your mouth. Yeah. Watch, watch what you are allowing to come out. If you didn't say something that's not good, repent. Of what that seed, one man to say this. He said, uh, "Whatever you say." He said, "Yeah, the grandmother used to say, oh, 'All y'all gonna worry me to death. Y'all gonna worry me to death.'" He said, "Whatever you say concerning things of that nature, after that, say, and that's just the way I want it. If you say something bad, he said, that's just the way I want it. Oh, you're gonna be just like your little good call, and that's just the way I want it." <laughs> Then you'll stop saying those type of things. Now, my wife and I, we made a lot of mistakes, but boy, we ain't never cuss our children out and say those type of things to them. Matter of fact, I say that because through all out the years, the best part of my day was after a long days of work, was pulling up front of the door, and my kids happy to see me and my wife didn't have to see me. That's the best part of the day. That's you got to deal with all these crazies out here. Let me, let me turn to another scripture here. Turn to uh, Psalms. Psalms 34. Let's do 34 first. Seven says, The angel of the Lord encounters all around those who fear him and delivers them. Y'all need to mark these scriptures down, and there's so many more. But it says, The angel of the Lord will encounter around all those who, and that fear is not fear, no, it's a respect, it's a reverence. I never, ever, ever wanted my kids to fear me. I never was that type of man. I want you to be happy when I come. Not all the time you had folk that didn't want to greet me because they had done something wrong. I knew when somebody done something wrong, they, they, they wasn't at the door. They wouldn't come. 
did what he did. What happened? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But the angels are encamped all around the Bible. You got to pray, you got to pray these prayers over your children and over your grandchildren. Amen. You got to give the angels charge over them. Yes, Lord. Y'all already know how dangerous these streets are. Yes. Yes, Lord. Stuff happening all the time. You got to give the angels charge over them to protect them, to keep them, to minister to them, to, 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 to guide them and direct them and lead them in the right way. Psalm 91. I'm almost finished. 91 love say for he. He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In the hand they shall bear you up, they shall dash your foot against the stone. All of us are here by the grace of God. That's right. And by our smartness, savviness, sickness. Whatever, we are here by his grace and his mercy only. Yes. But we are here for his purpose so that we may be used, that we may be an example, that people can look at us, look at us and say, hey, yes. yes. No, we're not flawless, right. but man, we got to be better. Yes. Yeah. We got to have some resemblance of the word. The living word. We have to have some reason. Somebody got to know there's a difference in you. Yeah. Yeah. Evidence. Evidence. Right. Amen. Amen. Evidence. Amen. That something is in you that got you doing what you're doing. That you're making these right decisions. Amen. One more strip. We'll let you go. It's found in Hebrews. Hebrews 1. And I appreciate y'all allowing me. Amen. Amen. Hebrews 1 and 14 say, Are there not all ministry spirits sent forth to minister for, for those who, who will and have salvation? Talking about, he's speaking about the angels. Who didn't have salvation? We did. Yes, we do. We are saved. So aren't they minister to us, they strengthen us. Yes. They work for us. Yes. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. They just wait on the law for command. Yes. So what it is that you want to happen in your life. Because those other demons, they always harass you on a daily basis. And they're telling you lies about things that's going to happen that's never going to come to pass. Thank you, Lord. Never. But that's their job to lie and harass you and tell you you're no good. You're never going to be in the day. You're never going to amount to this. This not going to work. That's not going to work. You're going to get put out. You're going to lose your call. Blah, 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 blah. Uh -huh. But you speak the word only. And you'll see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I thank y'all. I appreciate Greg yeah. steady pushing me. Amen. Amen. Right, because if y'all don't find out right now, that's all he do. Him and beloved, they try to push you into the calling. Yes, 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 yes. Thank you. be like, man, don't push. Stop pushing. <laughs> so now it's your time. I need you, yes. I need you to speak. Yes. I, I, I don't like, I, I'm, that's not who I am. But I'm gonna be obedient. Amen. That's right. That's right, Cal. And do what God said, do. Amen. Amen. Wednesday, 